Today on Airman Outdoors, my top five tips for beginner or new backpackers and hikers. Stick around, guys. It's going to be hard to come up with just five. Wow. Hey, hey, YouTube. Welcome back to Airbin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Airbin, but you knew that, didn't you? Well, it's another beautiful day here in South Carolina. It's a balmy 40 degrees. Hey, I saw this video that I just watched earlier this morning by Max over at Hike Camp. One of my favorite channels. If you haven't checked out Max at Hike Camp, I'll put a description in the link below so you can go check out his channel. Wait, scratch that, reverse it. I'll put a link in the description section below. There we go. But anyway, his video was a uh, video that he was tagged in where you list your top five tips for beginner backpackers or hikers and uh, he didn't really tag anybody he kind of made it an open tag I think he and I are kind of on the same level of backpacking he mentioned that he's not like a, a long distance backpacker that's me I'm not a long distance backpacker but I do enjoy hiking I do enjoy getting out on the hills of the mountains and down at the coast but I tend to stick more to the short day hike overnight one night maybe two nights max anyway so I thought that I would share my top five tips for beginner backpackers or hikers and I'm not nor have I ever claimed to be a professional backpacker I am what you would call a weekend warrior uh, just a recreational hiker, whatever my, you might want to call it, anything but professional. I am not that. It's hard to come up with five, I'll tell you, but I'm going to try. You guys might get some bonus footage here because uh, there's so many things that you want to share with a new backpacker. And I think it's great that so many people are getting involved in it. There's so much beauty out there. God has done so many wonderful things. And I believe that he wants us to see it. And to see it, you got to get out there and do it. So, here we go. Top five tips for beginner hikers. Um, number one, I would say shoes or boots. Whichever you prefer. And whichever you prefer, make sure number one that they are comfortable number two make sure that they're waterproof number three make sure that they're the right size these are the shoes that I hike in most often now these are Merrill um, of all the gear that I spend the most money on I think shoes are the most important thing and that's where the money should go you take care of your feet your feet will take care of you. But as you can see, these Merrill shoes, you don't have to worry about laces coming untied and tripping or anything like that. Uh, they're waterproof. They're comfortable. They've got good Vibram soles for uh, traction. So yeah, shoes are very important. Take care of your feet. I guess 1A would be socks. Wear some good, thick uh, wool or wool blend socks is what I recommend. Also, in regards to that, it's not a bad idea to stick an extra pair of socks in your pack. Also, regarding shoes, don't just go out and buy a pair of shoes the day before you're going to go on a hike. Buy the shoes ahead of time. Go through the breakthrough period. Get them worn in. Get them sized to your foot. Make sure that before you go on the trail, they're comfortable. Because the last thing you want to do is come back with blistered or bloody feet. Trust me. So, number one, shoes. 
The number two thing I would say would be um, invest in a good pack, okay? Uh, you want your pack to be comfortable. Now, if you just go to a Walmart and pick up a bag off the shelf, you're taking a chance. It may be comfortable. It may not. It may not fit you, or it may. It's uh, rolling the dice. What you want to do, what I recommend that you do, is go to a place that does pack fitting and have them fit you for a pack. I mentioned money being spent on shoes. Just because I'm saying get fitted for a nice pack, that doesn't mean you have to break the bank. There are a lot of good packs out there that can be fitted that are affordable. For example, this is my pack of choice. This is my Kelty Red Wing 44. Okay, it's a 44 liter pack and I bought this at a sporting goods store here in South Carolina that you could go to and they have professionals that will measure the pack. We're talking about the length of the torso, the straps, um, and everything like that. You also want to make sure that you've got adjustable shoulder straps, a nice padded back strap. You want to make sure that you have a sternum strap across here and then a good solid thick waist band. You want to make sure that it's comfortable on the back because this is what's going to be riding up against your back. You want to make sure that you've got some ventilation. You want to make sure that it's padded and that it fits properly. There are a lot of different types of packs, but if you go to a professional and say, hey, this is the type of backpacking I'm going to be doing. This is the, the length of time that I'm planning on usually backpacking. This is the gear that I plan on getting or that I already have. And they can help you determine what size pack you need. Having a good quality pack doesn't mean it has to be expensive but make sure that you get it fitted and uh, make sure you know how to work all of the adjustments how to tighten up the shoulder straps 2A under backpack would be make sure you have a waterproof backpack cover some of them have it built in some of them are separate you can buy them separate but in case you get stuck in foul weather you don't want all your gear to be wet. So make sure you have a backpack cover. Alright, so number two on the list, a good quality backpack. Alright, that fits properly. Alright, let's move on to number three on the list now. Avoid excess gear. Okay? This is going to take over, over time, this is going to be easier for you to do. You don't need to pack the kitchen sink. Okay? You want to make sure that you're prepared and that you have all the bases covered. And what I mean by it, it'll take a couple of times for you to go. If you have gear in your pack and you've gone backpacking three times and never once pulled out that particular piece of gear, odds are you don't need it. Avoid carrying excess stuff, okay? Remember, the more you carry, the more it weighs. The more it weighs, the more of a toll it plays on your back and your legs when you're hiking regardless of what distance you're hiking so carrying unnecessary things is just really a waste of energy a waste of space and if you don't need it don't take it there's kind of a fine line there how do I know what I need how do I know what I don't need make sure you cover the basics okay make sure you have food Make sure you have water. Make sure you have multiple ways to start a fire. Make sure that you have shelter. Make sure that you have, um, well, I'm kind of jumping ahead. Make sure you have rain gear. Basically, make sure you have all the bases covered, but don't carry things that you don't need. Number three, avoid carrying excess, unneeded, and unused items. All right, let's move on to number four. Number four is be 
prepared. I learned this back in the Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts actually, and it has stuck with me throughout my whole life. That's why I'm a prepper. And I have that same prepper mentality when it comes to backpacking. You want to be prepared. The last thing you want to do is leave on a beautiful looking day like this for an overnight hike and then wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to a severe thunderstorm and you're thinking to yourself, I got to get out of here tomorrow and I don't have any rain gear. Be prepared for the elements. Try to determine what the weather's going to be like. But even the weathermen can't get it right. So be prepared for rain. Okay? As far as your shelter goes, be prepared for rain. Make sure you have a ground tarp. Make sure you have a rain fly. Storms can come up like that. Okay? So being prepared not just for weather conditions, but also for wildlife, animals. Is the area you're going to prone to bears? In the Smoky Mountains, sometimes you can encounter bears. It might not be a bad idea to get either a bear horn or bear spray. Um, even a loud whistle can sometimes detour black bears uh, from messing with you. But I have come up on black bears and I've been able to yell out, hey bear, hey bear, wave my arms, blow a whistle, back off, and then he turns and runs the other way. That's happened to me twice. Um, also, your clothing, when we're talking about being prepared. Dress in layers, okay? You can always take clothes off, but if you don't have any more to put on, you can't, okay? It'd be better to wear an under layer, a mid layer, and an outer layer. And then if you have to shed that outer layer during the day and put it back on at night, that'd be better than not having that outer layer at all. So being prepared for anything that could come your way. Being prepared for getting lost, okay? Um, you should always carry with you a map of the area that you're going. Even if you know that at the trailhead, it's got an outline that shows that this is a loop and in three miles you're going to end up right back where you started. How well is that trail marked? If you're a beginner hiker, you may not know. And sometimes you can get off trail. And when you get off trail, you can get lost. So one, having a map, okay, and then two, a compass. So be prepared to be lost as well. Uh, know where you started, know where you're going ahead of time, but also have a map and a compass in case you do get off track, okay? Um, a lot of things fall under be prepared. Max made a good point. Even if you're not planning on spending the night, be prepared to, just in case. And then the last thing is have a checklist. There are a plethora of YouTube channels that give good hiking checklists. I have one. I doggone it, I don't have it with me. I have one that I had laminated. And every single time I go through that checklist. Everything. As might seem redundant, but if you utilize a checklist every single time, I don't care if you've never been hiking before and this is going to be your first trip or if you've been hiking for years. I think most experienced hikers and backpackers use a checklist. Don't assume it's in the bag from last time. Make sure it's in the bag. Alright? So, guys, there are a lot of other tips out there, but those, I think, are the five most important um, for a new backpacker okay proper shoes a proper pack avoid excess gear uh, be prepared for anything that could happen and then utilize a checklist always utilize a checklist all right that's it guys so uh i'm gonna do the same thing as max did 
I'm going to leave this as an open tag. It's important for new backpackers and hikers to have information available on YouTube so that before they go out, they can get some advice. So if you have any advice that you want to share with a new backpacker or hiker, please do so. And uh, till next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors. Thank you.